Hello moon babies. Today we are finally going to delve into some witch crafting. That's right. I'm finally doing this video. I've had a couple requests for it, um, both here on YouTube. I got a couple messages, um, as well as on my Tumblr blog looking for a video of how to do this. Um, this little cute little crafty thing. Um, and I just want to tell you a little bit about it. Um, and especially to point out the versatility of this. Um, and this is for the anti-anxiety or anti-depression um, little pouch uh, or uh, satchel, as you might call it, depending on how big or small you want to make it. Um, and like I said, I've had requests for this, and I think that's mainly because I flippantly mentioned it um, a little while back in one of my videos about the pagan challenge where we were talking about what kind of witchcraft do we do on the regular and I talked about um, kind of my preparations for spells um, not so much the actual spells I do and like I said this is not a spell but this is um, kind of a working in a different manner um, my boyfriend and I both have issues <laughs> and I hate to put it that way but um, mental illness is one of those things that seems to be such a big problem these days and if there's nothing else that your witchcraft can do for you um, it's your ability to help yourself um, or to help somebody that you love and he actually specifically told me that he has had a lot of relief from carrying this around with him and I, I don't know if it's necessarily just um, the magic of it or you know the fact that you just have that reassurance that you have something there holding you grounded and keeping you safe. Um, but that is all up to what you believe in and how you think that things work. Um, and as we know, magic is an active prayer. So in a way, this is an active prayer to ward off our anxiety or a depression or whatever you might be struggling in. Um, and I wanted to start with this one because, like I said, not just because it was requested, but um, because I particularly enjoy this one. Um, so anyway, here we are. Uh, this is my normal setup when I do a working in my kitchen. And I do consider this crafting, but I also consider it kitchen magic, um, mainly because of herbs and the salt. Um, and it's not technically always looked at that way. From the greater community but I look at it that way because I'm using herbs from my garden and I'm using I'm cooking in my kitchen without actually cooking and I'm, I'm doing magic in my kitchen so I consider it kitchen magic um, as a kitchen witch so let's dive in uh, this is my usual setup like I said um, and I've kind of prettied it up for you guys so that you don't get bored of staring at me or staring at something stupid um, but here we have our lavender oil, and I'm going to list all the things that you need or the optional ingredients because, like I said, it's very customizable, and I don't actually have it set up the way I always do it. Um, I'm actually doing it a little bit specially because I wanted to um, make a little change here and there every time I do this. Um, so like I said, this is my normal setup. These are the herbs from my garden. Um, we have some basil here very important and I don't have white sage even though that would be the ideal but I do have some beautiful sage straight out of my garden beautiful leaves here I've got some rosemary also from my organic garden because organic gardening is the best and I've actually gotten very interested in it lately um, as you might have noticed I also have some sea salt now one of the this is actually a optional ingredient and I say optional because you don't necessarily need it. The reason behind that is that there are two ways of actually making this. Um, today, I don't have lemon peel. Um, you could always use something with a lemony taste to it, but today I don't have anything that I'm not using or have anything that I can keep separately because I do want to point out that I keep um, my workings separate. And I say that because I think it's important to keep certain items separately, which maybe this is just me being anal, but I, I keep um, lemons and herbs that I use for cooking separate from the ones I use 
for everyday magic, um, unless I'm doing kitchen magic, which to them I can think it's, you know, interchangeable. But I don't have any lemons on me today, so um, I'm using the sea salt method. And you can use both or either or. Um, they have similar properties. They also, you know, so the salt is good for warding and this is why I particularly chose salt today, not just because I didn't have it, but because I think they work well together. I have my jar, which um, is freshly cleaned, salted, watered, and dried um, to keep it clean because that's the other thing. I don't like a lot of clutter, so I don't keep lots and lots of drawers, um, which ideally if I had the space, I'd have a giant spice cupboard and all kinds of jars and different things for this. But since I don't, um, ignore the watermarks, but <laughs> I always clean and then cleanse and then clean again <laughs> um, anytime I'm doing this. And I think the main reason for that is because it kind of protects the working, you know, it, it keeps it cleanse. And since we're trying to do a cleansing kind of, you know, anti-warding type of spell here, you don't want to have leftovers from the last one or from another one. You want to keep everything separate. Um, so, but be like I said, I only have one today, so that's what I'm using. Um, I also want to point out I don't have my mortal and pestle, so I've got my pans here, and I got a good old kitchen knife, um, which has also been cleansed. And I'm big on cleansing because, like I said, I don't want the energies or leftovers from another spell to get connected. And over here we have organic natural linens here. Um, they're in all natural fibers because I'm big on nature and I'm big on natural and anything that I can get into my working that is from nature, I try to choose it. So organic cotton. Um, these are not that hard to find anymore, but they can be kind of expensive. And the last thing I have set up that goes together with this is hemp thread, which also again goes with the kind of very important aspect of from nature and hemp is a very strong durable very earthy important plant really we don't necessarily in this country appreciate it for everything that it can do but when i can get something made with hemp i have hemp paper i i support it um and not because i'm a druggie or anything like that um not to say anything against anyone who is which i certainly don't I just am not going to go there today. Um, and it also, I wanted to show you, it softens up. This is a bracelet that my boyfriend made me for um, our anniversary to show our dedication to each other. Um, and I, I don't know if you can tell, if you can tell, but the fibers here are a little bit rougher um, because they haven't been used. But here, if I can get my camera to focus... They are a little bit fuzzier and softer, and they do become strong but soft. Um, so I also have my square already pre-cut to save time, and my little, um, it's usually about this long, so I'd say, what, six inches maybe, not even, of the hemp thread to tie the satchel with. And last but not least, um, this is kind of the ritual, almost magical part of this. Um, which is not necessary um, because it is crafty. You don't have to do it. I do it because it, it's just part of my craft. Um, I have the four elements or the, you know, I have the four corners set up in candle form. And then in the middle, I have a lavender candle. Because we are using lavender as a essential oil, I'm having a essential oil soy candle lit. Um, and the reason is because you're trying to, while you do this working, also cleanse yourself while you're preparing to make this to carry with you. So you want to kind of imbibe it or imbue it with your own happier, calmer energy. And since white lavender is very calming, it just makes sense to me. Um, so let's get started. This part, um, you don't necessarily have to do it in the moral and pestle. I just think it, it kind of, it's more the way that traditionally should be done. Um, certainly, you know, do whatever you have, rip it with your hands, chop it. Today I'll probably do some of both, um, simply because I gotta carry my camera around, it's looking to be a little hard. Um, but basically, see if I can do this left-handed. Um, 
right-handed. Um, I would usually not do it this necessarily this way, but to for the sake of simplicity, um, you can rip, tear, or crush, or chop your herbs. And I like to do mine separately because I'm anal and I like everything to kind of be pretty perfect. So there's some rosemary. And usually just this much is enough for two. So I'll put the rest over here. Base will run away. I don't think I really need that much more. Maybe a little bit. Um, so give another more chop in. And that's chopped. So stuff off my knife huh? and next I just start assembling it into my jar so I'm going to put this in and I'm going to probably just start ripping and tearing and chopping the rest of my herbs um, and for the sake of the camera work here I'm going to pause you all and I'll be right back as soon as I have them all chopped just one moment Alright guys, so I finished tearing and chopping, and here I have my sage, which smells amazing, and the basil. So I'm just going to pop those right in the jar. And here the lemon would smell amazing, but since we don't have it today, we're just going to add in the salt. And this part I actually keep separate. I don't add the salt until I've started combining these first. Um, Mainly because I like to keep it separate. It's just a, it's just a part of me, I guess. Um, and this is the part where if you were doing um, a chant or something specific that you would want to say, um, maybe a a mantra or an affirmation that you want to go through with this, kind of putting your intent in here. Um, right now I'm just going to be thinking it because I haven't quite decided what I really wanted to say. I didn't come up with something brilliant for today's working. Um, and you don't always have to say it out loud. Um, and that is an important part of remembering what your witchcraft can do. You don't have to scream it to the world that you're doing it. Sometimes you just got to think it to yourself. And they look pretty blended. So now I'm going to pass it over our elements and our lavender. Not that it's going to give it scent, but it kind of warms up the jar, which kind of warms up the oils in these herbs. Because you have to remember, herbs are filled with oils. Um, that's where we get the essential oils from them. That's where we get the scent. That's why we get the beautiful flavor. So just remember, you got to kind of warm them up sometimes. It's not always, you know, essential. Um, certainly for those working, it's not. But because I have the opportunity and I'm working here with you guys, I figured I would include this step. And I do clockwise <laughs> because counterclockwise comes next. So I do clockwise to stir them together. And then counterclockwise brings in, for me, the warding part. Now, like I said, it's not necessary. You don't have to do it, but it's just part of how I do this. And never mind, one of my candles did go out, but that's not essential either. They're really just representative. Um, so that part is done. So now, if I can get this open, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I kind of remember it, uh, it does get stuck sometimes. There we go. All right. So here you have your pretty well mixed up, um blend here and now I'll add in the salt which this is pure sea salt um, sometimes I don't use white sometimes I use the Himalayan pink um, it's really just a matter of what you prefer in this case this time I'm not going to put the lid on as tight I think <laughs> but I'll add that in there it's all in there and we're just going to mix one more time this part doesn't have to be as vigorous you can hear it bouncing around in there because I use the whole salt, so I don't like to grind it unless I'm eating it. Um, so that should be good. Pass over a couple times. And that should be good. Alright, so next, I gotta. Sorry guys, my camera died. <laughs> But I'm back, and I didn't I didn't go on without you. It's going to be a long video. I'm just warning you here. I talk a lot. 
Um, so anyway, you just add in a drop or two. And I wouldn't drop more than a drop or two because often these essential oils are very strong and they last quite a long time. Um, I had some on the bracelet that I showed you um, that my boyfriend made. It was his own kind of crafting um, to show his love for me. Um, and he put it in there as well, and it lasted freaking forever. So um, at least a month or two, I could still smell it. Um, and that's partly, I think, the wonderful part of hemp is that it, it's so strong and lasting that it, it can withstand that. So here we have our little satchel. I just kind of bundle it together into a little ball at the bottom so you can tie it at the top. Um, and that part's really not the difficult part. Um, and this I will probably choose to keep in my purse because I already have one in my car. Um, and I just threw out and destroyed the one that was previously in my purse. Um, and that's the thing, you might want to consider permanently destroying these when you're done um, to ensure that the magic within it um, disperses in a way that it disperses your anxiety, it disperses your depression. Um, everything is, you know, connected in a way and every choice that you make for these is connected. So we're all set here, guys. This is everything we needed to do. Um, and you're all set. If you want to leave a comment below to let me know what you thought. If you tried it out, let me know if it works for you. I love to hear feedback. I don't hear a lot from you guys, but I'd love to. Um, so have a blessed day. I'll be back later. I've got some other videos to catch up on with for the Pagan Challenge. But for now, I'll leave you here. Blessings and blessed be.